Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Carol. You'll have to give me a rain check, Angel. I'm all tied up. Yeah, some gal I know just dreamed up a murder that's as pretty as a picture. And she wants me to supply the frame. <laughs> One thing you learn working as a private detective, all the money in the world can't buy poverty. As a case in point, I give you Adolf Rausch. Mr. Rausch and his son, Willie, run a chain of famous eating places in New York. And the Rauches were doing real well until the morning of July 12th, when a lean-looking gentleman in a blue serge suit opened the door to their private office. Yes, sir? Something I can do for you? Careful, sis. You're leaving yourself wide open. Mr. Adolph Roush in? No, he's gone for the day. You know where I can locate him? No, I'm afraid not. Well, who's here? Uh, Mr. William Roush. He's Adolph's son, isn't he? That's right. Isn't he an officer of the corporation? He's vice president. And I want to meet Willie, too. Who shall I say he's calling? Peter Mason. What is it, Sheila? There's a Mr. Mason to see you, Mr. Roush. Mason? Where's he from? Tell him Washington. I'm with the Treasury Department. Oh, Mr. Roush. Never mind, Sheila. I heard him. Is my father in? No. Well, uh, well, tell Mr. Mason I'll, uh, I'll see him in a few minutes. Yes, sir. Will you have a seat, sir? I don't mind if I do. But suppose we make it in little Willie's office. Oh, you can't, you can't go in there. Mr. Rouse isn't ready for you. That's just the way I like it. Is this it? No, no, you can't. Uh... Hello, Willie. I said I'd see you in a few minutes, Mr. Mason. Are you kidding? In a few minutes, you'd have been out of the building and on your way to the North Pole. Are you crazy? No, but you and your old man must be if you thought you'd get away with the swindle. What are you talking about? Evasion of income taxes. Not nice to defraud Uncle Sam, will he? How old are you? Twenty-eight. Hmm. Well, that's not so bad. I bet you'll be out before you're forty. But your father is another... Hold it, Willie. What do you think you're doing? I'm getting out of here, and you're not going to stop no, me. No, Mr. He's giving you good advice, pal. Put away that gun. Get out of my way, Mason. Don't be a sucker, Willie. I'm staying right here, and if you don't drop that cannon, you're going to be hurt. That door. That door. I'll kill you. All right, sonny boy. Drop it. I said let me go. Oh. Roush. Roush. He's dead. Yeah. Where's the phone, honey? I gotta call my office. All right, fella. Open him up. I gotta pass here to see Mr. Roush. Hello, Elliot. Hiya, boss. Very nice to see you. Though I'm sorry, I can't offer you a seat. I got good news for you, Mr. Rush. Yes? Yeah. They're going to allow you bail. You'll be out in 24 hours. Just in time to attend my son's funeral. Uh, I don't have to tell you how sorry I am. Uh, as far as that fellow Mason from the Treasury Department is concerned... Oh, I'm, I'm not blaming Mr. Mason, Elliot. Willie was very stupid to do what he did. What I'm interested in now are the people who placed him in that position. What have you learned? Well, like you suspected, the Treasury Department got its lead to a tip-off. Someone who informed for the reward. Have you any idea who this informer might be? Yeah, not yet, but I'm working on it. You do that, Elliot. Our unknown friend deserves much more than a monetary reward. I'm going to see he collects everything he has coming to him. Ah, well, what have we got here? Ah, looks like Mrs. Elliot's boy hit the jackpot. Yeah, this is Elliot. She's on her way up. Oh, you idiot. Why didn't you give me a call before? If she catches me here, it's going to... Oh, hold it. There she is now. i got to hang up. No, no, I'll think of something. Uh, hi, hiya, honey. What? I said, hiya. What are you doing in this apartment? Me? Well, I'm waiting for Tony. <laughs> Good old Tony. When do you expect him home? How'd you get in here? Well, you see, Miss... Uh, Talbot, Miss Sheila Talbot. Well, I gotta say, honey, I was waiting for good old Georgie it's and... Tony before. Did I say that? Huh? I still want to know how you got in here. That's simple. Door was open. Well, I gotta run now. Just a second. I'm sorry, baby. I got a couple of stops to make. But uh, it's been a real pleasure. We must do it again sometime, huh? Hello? Hello. Is that you, Mr. Rush? Yes, 
Yes, I knew. We're making progress. The actual tip-off to the Treasury boys was made by a babe named Sheila Talbot. You're lying. Ah, uh, you wouldn't say so if you saw what I did in her apartment. But Sheila's been my secretary for almost five years. I don't care if it's a million. She was the informer. Who put her up to it? Huh? I refuse to believe Sheila conceived this idea by herself. Where's her motive? Well, isn't the reward doing enough? And not for a girl like Sheila. I know her too well. She's the type who requires other inspiration. You mean a man? That's exactly what I mean. Let me know just as soon as you locate him. Just a second. Sheila. Marty. Marty, I'm so glad I found you home. I'll cut it out, Sheila. It's too hot here. Don't talk to me that way, darling. I couldn't stand it now. What do you mean now? Mr. Ross tells I was the one who went to the Treasury Department. Ah, you're out of your mind. No, I tell you it's true, Marty. How do you know? This afternoon I found a man in my apartment. He claimed he blundered in there. What makes you think he didn't? You know that silver cigarette case you gave him? What about it? Missing. He must have taken it. Well, I don't think that case means anything one way or the other. You're wrong, darling. It was the only gift you ever gave me, so I had it engraved. What? Marty, you're hurting me. What did you have them put on that case? Shut my initials and yours. Well, you stupid little... Do you realize what Rosh will do to me if he finds out? How can he? I wouldn't tell him. What about the jeweler? He's in Seattle. I had it done while I was there on my vacation. Well, that won't stop him for long either, unless... Unless what? We've got to give him a goat. What? That's right. A man with the same initials as I got. And preferably in the same business. Why the same business? Because Rosh will realize you must have had a private detective advising you. But there may not be another private detective with the same set of initials. Oh, in a city the size of New York, there's bound to be at least a hundred. All we need is one. And when you find him? We're going to write you a dozen letters that'll, that you'll plant all over your apartment. They'll be so hot, they'll blister your hands just to pick them up. And we're going to sign them all with your friend's name. Well, that's not right, Marty. Ah, shut up. Ow! Now get to work on this telephone directory. What do I look for? How many times do I have to explain? A private detective with the same initials as mine. And since my name is Marty Walsh, I assume you've got brains enough to figure it out. We'll return to the adventures of the Falcon in just a moment. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. And that's where Mrs. Waring's boy Michael blundered into the act. For three hours after Marty Walsh and Sheila Talbot finished their research, I entertained a visitor. He was a good-looking gent in his 50s, and he obviously didn't believe in beating around the bush. My name is Rosh, Mr. Waring, Adolf Rosh. Come in. I take it you have heard of me. I believe I have you to thank for all my difficulties. What? I mean you and Sheila Talbot. Tell me, Mr. Waring, how were you planning to divide the money? What are you talking about? Uh, what is it you informers customarily receive? 50% of the payments? Oh, look, Roush, I've got work to do. That reminds me. So have I. What's the idea of the gun? You mean Sheila hasn't warned you? And who's this Sheila you keep babbling about? You never heard the name, I suppose. No. You recognize this cigarette case? Should I? It has your initials, darling. And how do you explain these letters we found in her apartment? If you will notice the name at the bottom, might wear... I didn't write this, but it is your name. Yes, but anybody could type it. And your address. Yes. Then that's good enough for me. What do you want, Roush? Just your life. Are you kidding? Hardly. So if you have any final request... Yes, I'd like to go on living for a while. That is the one favor I'm unable to grant. 
Oh, it looks like I'll have to help my oh, God, you kid. fool. Oh, come on, drop in. Let, let go, it. let go before I shoot. Oh. I warned you, sir. Yes, you did. Come on, Roush. Uh, Get up. Oh, you, you deceived me, sir. I thought I had shot you. Yeah, I'll probably win an Oscar for that performance. All right, Mr. Wang. Anytime you're ready. Huh? You had the gun. You think I'm going to kill you? I'm sure a man of your ability will be able to prove it to his self Now, look, Roush, why don't you get smart? Don't you see I was the patsy in this setup? Whoever wrote a love letter to a woman and signed it with his full name? Uh, just a moment. Oh, you got it now, huh? I'm not the man you but want. But Elliot swore to me Who's that Elliot? He... A man who works for me. He found those letters in Sheila's apartment. He was meant to. You know... Oddly enough, I'm beginning to believe you. Thanks. But if you are not the man, who is it? That's what I intend to find out. I pay you five pounds. You haven't got enough money to hire me. But you just said... I know what I said, but I'm working for myself. Living has become a habit of mine, and I'd like to find the character who tried to break it for me. Now beat it. Sheila, remember me? No. I don't see how you forget so soon, especially after the way you saved my letters. Oh, you're... My query. Get out. Now, Angel, that's no way to talk to the man who was everything in your life. If you don't leave this apartment at once... You're what? Scream? Don't be a fool, Sheila. It'd take a lot more than that to discourage me. Who dreamed up this little stuff? I don't know what you're talking about. Look, Angel, I don't often slug a woman. You're not frightening me. No, you must be pretty used to it by this time. Why'd you pick on me for the fall guy? We didn't have... Any choice? I don't know what you're talking about. But well, there must be a reason. What have I got in common with your mysterious boyfriend? Wavy hair, gray eyes, or was it just a set of initials? What? Yeah, Roush told me about that cigarette case. Who gave it to you, Sheila? Okay, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Now, where's your classified phone Put book? that down. Don't be silly, Angel. I could pick one up any place. Now, suppose we look under private detective. What makes you think he's a private detective? Three reasons. One, I am. Two, a private detective could be very helpful in a setup like this. And number three, the mere fact you asked the question. Now, where the W is. Ah, here we are. Walker, George, Wang, Twyla, Wayne, Jack, Wayne, Dave, Wayne. <laughs> Who'd ever think I had so many competitors? You're not going to find it there. No? Then how come there's a pencil mark next to Walsh and Lynch? They're friends of mine. And what might Mr. Walsh's first name be? Harry, Harry H. Well, much as I'd love to take your word for it, suppose I check for myself. Mr. Waring, wait. Don't worry, Sheila, I'll be back. I want to talk to you more about those letters. Marty, this is Sheila. Didn't I tell you? I couldn't not... help myself, darling. Everything's gone wrong. Mike Waring was just here. What? I don't know how he talked Mr. Rouse out of it, but he's on his way over to see you. Who gave him my name? He got it the same way you got his, when he worked backwards. And there was a red pencil mark next to yours in the directory. Well, you stupid little fool. Marty, don't talk to me like that. I've risked everything I have for you. Never mind throwing it up to me now. When did Waring leave? Just a few minutes ago. Well, that gives me a little time anyway. What are you going to do? I've come to one conclusion, Sheila. You're naturally the worst some type, so the less you know, the better off we'll both be. I'll call you back later. Who's that? Hey, Marty, open up. Okay, Lynch, wait a second. What's the idea of locking the door to the office? I had a reason. Listen, Lynch, i got to make this fast. You know the Adolf Roush case? Don't tell me we've been asked to work for him. No. Well, we could do as well for him as somebody else. He's a dead duck. I read somewhere that the informer in the case will collect around 75 G. It'll be closer to 100. How would you know? I haven't got time to explain, but I'm in a jam and I'm going to need your help. Mike Waring's on his way over. Ah, oh, no. Just because we're partners doesn't mean I have to cut myself in for 50% of your headache. Well, evidently they didn't teach you English in school. You ought to know. We went to the same one. Well, how are you on sign language? <laughs> Sorry, pal. I just want to make sure we understand each other. And this is the only kind of talk a guy like you understands. Walsh? 
Walsh. Walsh? All right, mister, don't move. What? Turn on the lights, Davis. What? Pete Mason. What are you doing here, Waring? Suppose I asked you that. I asked you first. And I've got a badge from the Treasury Department that makes it official. I want to see Mr. Walsh. Why? It's a personal matter. You're not kidding? What are you getting at, Mason? He's dead. What? Apparently that's news to you. Oh, it certainly is. Can I see the body? Yes, it's in his private office. Where's that? Well, you've no idea, hmm? If I had, I wouldn't be asking. Right in here. Oh, no. Pretty, hmm? What was it? A slug? Five. And any one of them could have done the trick. Then why did the killer use five? It certainly made a mess of his face. Mm-hmm. His own mother wouldn't know him now. How do you know it's Walsh? Could be his partner, Lynch. He was identified by a stenographer. We found her telephone number in Walsh's file. That's a brilliant piece of work. And you know what's wearing? Thorough. By the way, where is Lynch? Why bother with Lynch? We've already got the logical suspect. Yeah? Who? You know a gal named Sheila Talbot? Name sounds familiar. It should. She said you were up to her apartment an hour ago. Is that what she said? Mm-hmm. When you left her, she got the impression you were going over to see Walsh. It shouldn't have taken you more than 20 minutes to make the trip. Lucky I was delayed then, huh? Were you? Come on, Mason, quit fencing. You're not equipped for it. I was just thinking this might be your second trip. Are you accusing me of murdering Walsh? Never once entered my mind. Then you have no objections if I leave. None whatsoever. Go right ahead. Thanks. But, Mike... Yeah? Don't go too far. Just a second. Hello, Mr. Wary. What are you doing here, Roush? Well, it's a very long story. But I'm afraid I haven't got time for it. Then rearrange your schedule. You see, after I saw you, I had another talk with Sheila Talbot. I hope it was instructive. It was. There were a number of things that puzzled me, and she cleared them up very satisfactorily. She confessed that you two had hoodwinked me. What? Yes, she admitted to me you were the man after all. She's lying. I think not. Now, look, I proved to you before. Oh, I don't deny you're a very persuasive young man, Mr. Waring, but once bitten, twice shy. And you ought to know better than anyone else. Don't you see you're making a fool of yourself again? You've been had, Rouse. Sheila gave you my name again to protect her boyfriend. But she was too late. I bet if we call her now... Put down that phone... I see we're right back where we started. Not quite, sir. This time, you're not going to talk me out of it. And this time, you're not going to grab my gun. That you can depend on. We'll return to the adventures of the Falcon in just a moment. But first... Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. A private detective and a poker player have one thing in common. They both have to know when the fellow across the table is bluffing. I didn't think Roush was. He looked as if he held a wonderful hand, and he did. A forty-five caliber full. And I didn't see how I could possibly beat it. Have you anything else to say, Mr. Waring? No. Sit right where you are. Uh, but I think better when I'm on my feet. I'll make allowances for it. I tell you, Roush, you've got this all wrong. You deny being responsible for the death of my son. Yes, I'm not the guy. Sit down. There's someone at the door. I heard it, too. Just be quiet. Perhaps you'll go away. Ah, oh, Waring, open up. I know you're in there. What do you say, Roush? Who is it? I have no idea. All right. Get rid of him. Okay. If you don't mind, we'll walk to the door together, just in case. Hey, open up. Take it easy. I'm coming. You, Mike Waring? Come in, friend. Mr. Waring. Oh, that's right. You gentlemen haven't met, have you? Well, this is Mr. Adolf Roush. Roush? Well... Maybe I ought to come back. Oh, 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 I wouldn't think of it. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Funny, I don't believe I caught your name. 
Lynch. George Lynch. Of the firm of Walsh and Lynch? Yes. Well, what's on your mind? Well... Oh, you can't speak freely in front of me. Mr. Waring and I are old friends. Uh, yeah, we're practically inseparable. Well, you know that matter you're working on now. My partner, Mr. Walsh, wants to settle it. Oh, he does? Uh, yes. When did he send you to make that offer? A couple of hours ago. He told me to tell you he'll meet you halfway. You mean a 50-50 split? Yes. Well, I got news for you, Lynch. Get down, Roush. Oh. 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 Roush. Oh. Roush, what happened? I shot him. You're not kidding, Sheila. You better call the doctor. Don't bother. They bleed to death. Let him. He'll oh. the only man oh. I ever loved. Oh. But I've paid him back. Not quite. Oh. You see, he's not dead, Sheila. You just creased oh. his skull. Well, I'll remedy that right now. Cut it out, you little Let go of me. Are you going to yes. behave? Oh. Oh, grab that gun, Lynch. I got it. Family brawl, or can a stranger butt in? Oh, come in, Mason. You're just in time. Yes, so it would appear. Who killed him? Well, don't get your hopes up too high. He's not oh. dead. Oh. There, he's oh. coming to now. How do you feel, Roush? Yeah, yeah my... In my apartment? Well, I... Think... Uh-huh. I know I should have watched you more carefully. Oh, that wasn't my work. That was Sheila's. I'm only sorry I missed. You're wrong, Sheila. I didn't kill Walsh. Then who did? Figure it out for yourself, Mason. Who was the obvious suspect? Mr. Roush here. And who do you suppose murdered him? Her? No. Roush. Do you realize what you're saying? Perfectly. But you've got one consolation, Roush. You'll never have to serve time for income tax evasion if they fry you for murder. <laughs> your boyfriend, Marty Walsh. I don't have to tell you his motive. No, he felt Marty was responsible for his son's death. That's right. Well, how did Roush find out it was Marty? Simple. He had one of the best boys in New York working on it. A fellow named Paul Elliott. Then why did Roush pretend to think you were the man? Because he intended to kill Marty from the start. Yet, if he claimed he didn't know who your boyfriend was, nobody could suspect him. Then why did he threaten you after Marty's murder? For the same reason. By accusing me again... That was supposed to make us even more certain he was still in the dark as to the identity of the real informer. Sounds like it would work. It almost did. But Mr. Roush made one mistake. He based his actions on the fact that you were working with me. Yet when I revived him after he was shot, he hastened to reassure us that he hadn't killed Marty Walsh. But didn't Lynch mention Marty's name? Not in that connection. And neither did you. So obviously Mr. Roush knew a lot more than he pretended to. And if he knew about Marty... He could only have one reason for staging that scene with me. He was the killer. Right. What are you going to do with me? Not a thing. No offense to be an informer. As a matter of fact, you're in for a very handsome reward. Might run as much as a hundred thousand. But don't, don't go so fast. Huh? I live right here. Remember? Oh, yes. Well, any further questions? Yes. How would you like to come up for a while? Uh, no thanks. What's the matter? Well, as a private detective, I can understand a gal who informs. But as a man, I don't like women who kiss and tell. Good night, Angel. 